When deciding on the layout of playground equipment, there are four main issues to consider for folding spaces and impact areas. Extension, obstacles, overlapping, and impact attenuating properties. For extension, there are two main features having an influence on the extension and properties of impact areas. The equipment free height of fall and the existence of forced movement. In general terms, when the free fall height of the equipment is up to 1.5 meters, the extension of the impact area is also a minimum of 1.5 meters. Extension gradually increases with fall height. Forced movement exists when the movement is caused by the equipment characteristics and the user cannot fully control his body and come to a full stop instantly, like when swinging, rotating, gliding along a cableway, and so on. With forced movement, increased space may be needed before coming to a full stop when quitting the equipment, either willingly or due to a fall. Watch how far these two children move away from the equipment, enjoying the dizziness before coming to a full stop. In this case, the minimum extension required by the standard would not be enough to accommodate a safe stop and it would not afford the feeling of dizziness to the full, as they did. That would have reduced the play value. Children just love to jump out from moving equipment, like swings. So, for the sake of play value, a greater extension of the impact area free from obstacles may be desirable. In general terms, for equipment with forced movement, the standards often require an increased extension of the impact area, up to 3 meters in some cases. When it comes to obstacles, whatever the falling height and whether there is forced movement or not, the whole extension of the falling spaces and impact areas must be free from obstacles that could be hit by the user during a fall and cause serious injury. Some hazardous obstacles are related to design and layout, like excessive overlapping of falling spaces or fences or urban furniture in the impact area. In this case, the girls could hit the fence if falling off or thrown out of the equipment. Obstacles can also be due to construction and installation, like foundations or aggressive post shoes not deep enough, or to insufficient or lack of maintenance. In terms of overlapping, in general terms, overlapping of falling spaces are allowed. But the standard includes a recommendation to avoid it when there is intensive use, like highly populated play areas, as in school, or very different age groups. This is to allow for safer use and circulation, as well as for a more enjoyable place. Excessive overlapping may reduce play value and the potential for inclusion, as there is less space for adults supporting younger or less able children. When there is forced movement, overlapping of falling spaces and impact areas is usually not allowed. The restrictions or exceptions are laid down in the specific parts of the standard. Finally, we have impact attenuating surfacing. Adequate impact attenuating surfacing is required for playground equipment with a free height of fall greater than 60 cm or with forced movement. The standard does not forbid specific materials, as long as they provide enough shock absorbency uh, for the local situation, uh, according to some requirements and recommendations. There is no ideal material, as each has its own advantages and disadvantages. This will be the topic for another lesson.